Too many geology, too many geology. Hello, young people. Columnar basalt. Hiking today near Othello, Washington. Look at these columns. They're perfect and 50 feet high. These columns are found in a rock called basalt, which is a lava flow rock. We have them all over eastern Washington, but we can also find columns like this, Devil's Tower in Wyoming, Giant's Causeway in Ireland. We've even found columnar basalt on Mars. Here in eastern Washington, the Ice Age floods came barreling through this country thousands of years ago, ripping up a lot of bedrock and exposing these columns. And to figure out why the columns form, how about we actually climb to the top of these columns, walk around up there, see if we can't figure things out. Come on, let's get up there. Each of these is a column. We're up on top of them now. These cracks are 50 feet deep. And these cracks with this beautiful pattern are found all through nature. You go to a drying mud puddle after a thunderstorm and you see cracks like this. You go to the Arctic and you see permafrost with cracks in these shapes. These lavas cooled 10.5 million years ago when the lava came in at 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit and probably cooled over the course of a century. 100 years of cooling, these cracks got established back then. As the lava was cooling, contracting, surfaces shrinking, and the net result, columnar basalt near Othello, Washington. It's all out here to see Coolies, rocks, and canyons is scenery Right here for you and me. Two minute geology. Basalt lava with 50 foot cracks. First day of filming our geology videos? Had a little problem. Top of a column, top of a column, top of a column. Hello. Beautiful oh. show. Oh, We'll be back with a big bag. <laughs> My hammer? Still at the bottom. Tom and I had to come back the next weekend with another hammer to finish the episode. Two Minute Geology. Show me again. I'm doing a little video here okay. now, quick, Andrew. So show, show me again how much was, uh, how was it sitting and that patina is a little different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was sitting in the crack just just this one little tip exposed. Got it. You can see the slight difference. Oh, yeah. And then mm -hmm. what kind of magnets, magnets did you say you uh, had? The super magnets uh, from a hard drive. So a bunch of super magnets all tied to a string. <laughs> How big were those magnets all together kind of hanging out uh, the string? Probably about the size of your palm. Okay. Uh, a pretty big chunk. You were, you were mm -hmm. fishing pretty good down there. Yeah. You got what you needed. Yep. I could I could feel it. I could feel it grab the tip, but <laughs> it it wouldn't it wouldn't budge. So I had to I had to work it back and forth, a bunch oh. of different angles, and keep pulling it until eventually it it worked itself free of the sand. Yeah. Hey, Merry Christmas, man. Merry hey, Christmas. <laughs> top of a column. Top of a column. Top of a column. Hello. Beautiful oh. show. Oh, shit. We'll be back with a big bag. <laughs> we didn't plan that. Two minute geology. Two minute geology. Hello, young people. The Columbia River basalts near Quincy, Washington. We're at Quincy, Washington, but we could pick any spot between Spokane, Washington and Seaside, Oregon to do this show. These brown layers of basalt are everywhere in the place where the Ice Age floods did massive amounts of erosion thousands of years ago. 
there's more than 300 layers of basalt here. 300 separate volcanic eruptions. And the stack of basalt is more than two miles thick in places. The lavas started erupting 17 million years ago here and flooded a landscape, buried a landscape in lava. The obvious question is, which volcano erupted? Was it Mount Rainier? Mount St. Helens? The answer is none of those. The Cascade volcanoes do not match the chemistry of these basalt lavas. These are lavas that came from the east. They erupted out of fissures, deep cracks, that emitted Hawaiian-like lava starting 17 million years ago. Fissures that formed related to the birth of a hotspot that's now underneath Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. The present is the key to the past. To really visualize Eastern Washington 17 million years ago, we need to go to Hawaii today. Those Hawaiian lavas today are the same kinds of lavas that we have here. Lava flows in Hawaii, very fluid. The, the most fluid lavas we have in nature average less than three feet thick. Here in eastern Washington, the lava flows average 100 feet thick. In Hawaii, the lavas travel on average three miles in length. Here in eastern Washington, many of the lava flows traveled 300 miles. And in Hawaii, 30 miles are covered by a typical flow. Here in eastern Washington, 30,000 square miles of area buried. The Columbia River basalts near Quincy, Washington. It's all out here to see. Coolies, rocks, and canyons is scenery Right here for you and me Two Minute Geology Two Minute Geology The Two Minute Geology Hello young people Pillow lavas, just south of Vantage, Washington. Columbia River basalts here, each flow averaging 100 feet thick. And most of these lavas are dark colored from the top to the bottom of the lava flow. But this guy is orange at the bottom, you see that? A full one third of the basal section of the lava is orange with dark colored circles, kind of like bowling balls. Those are the pillow lavas. Pillows tell us that water was present. A large lake was here 15 million years ago between eruptions of lava. We know that because in Hawaii, underwater, we've seen lava there flow into fingers. The lava splits into these worm-like structures as it goes out into the Pacific Ocean. So these aren't bowling balls at all. They're cross-sections of worm-like structures with the lava going out into this lake in central Washington. The orange area under the lake water, the dark colored stuff above the level of that ancient lake. Okay, time for some detail. Pillow, beautiful edge of a pillow, crumbly orange pelagonite, over to another pillow. This is broken, fragile stuff. Angular pieces of lava. Some of them actually volcanic glass or obsidian. All through this orange crumbly pelagonite. There's drama recorded right here. This is hot lava, right? 2000 degrees Fahrenheit flowing into water that has a much lower temperature. Hot versus cold means bust up that rock. Petrified logs have been collected simply in this pelagonite, pulled right out of this zone between pillows themselves. And the location of pillow basalt all through central Washington helps us understand where ancient lakes and streams used to be. Pillow basalt in central Washington. It's all out here to see. 
Coolies, rocks, and canyons is scenery Right here for you and me Two Minute Geology Two Minute Geology The Two Minute Geology Hello young people Petrified wood out hiking today near Vantage, Washington in the Ginkgo Petrified Forest State Park there's a petrified tree right there, still standing. 15 and a half million year old tree. Been standing here for that long. It was petrified underneath a lava flow that was 15 and a half million years old. The lava flow has been taken away by the Ice Age floods and this stubborn tree held its ground. When you come out here and look, it's a desert landscape. We get less than 10 inches of rain a year. But when these trees were alive, this was a dense forest. Studying the kinds of wood that's out here, the petrified wood, we know we have a variety of trees that were dominated in this area. Those kinds of forests today only survive in places that have 50 inches of rain a year. I'm talking about the forests of Southeast United States or Eastern Asia. The ginkgo trees are rare, however. More than 50% of the trees are either Douglas fir or spruce. To understand how the petrification process took place to turn these trees to stone, let's take a closer look at some of these logs. We're at the museum at Ginkgo State Park got petrified logs laying on the ground here for visitors to enjoy. It's petrified. These are logs made out of stone. And they were pulled right out of basalt lava in the hills. Logs right in the lava. Why didn't the logs just burn up from the heat of the lava? They survived because there was water present. The logs were pulled out of the pillow zone at the base of a lava flow, which tells us that water dominated this landscape. The lake water protected the logs from the heat of the lava. And there was so much lava that we sealed off those logs from the atmosphere so we didn't rot the logs with oxygen. We had the right ingredients then for petrification. A lot of water, a lot of heat, and minerals, silica, from the overlying basalt lava. The hot water allowed for transfer of the silica into the wood, soaked into the wood, and exquisitely preserved the cell structure of these logs. We can then identify the different kinds of wood, the different kinds of trees, based on the patterns of these cell structures. Petrified logs, advantage, Washington. It's all out here to see. Coolies, rocks, and canyons is scenery. Right here for you and me. Two minute geology. Two minute geology. Hello young people, entrenched meander, this is the Yakima River just south of Ellensburg, Washington. Meanders are a feature of old age, these sweeping curves of the river. As rivers age, they develop more and more exaggerated meanders. We know this by flying over the Mississippi River system. And we see all stages of meander development back there. Eventually, the meander becomes so exaggerated that that curve is abandoned and an oxbow lake is formed and the channel becomes straight again. We can only develop these curves when an area is flat, like back east at the Mississippi. And here we've got these exaggerated curves as well, which means central Washington used to be flat. But there's a twist. This place isn't flat anymore. This is a deep canyon system. So to understand that twist, how about we get up on that rim? 
and get a big picture view of the Yakima River Canyon. Let's go up there. High up above the Yakima River, on the rim of the canyon looking down, there's one of our meanders. We know about meanders. The meanders got established when the area was flat, a subtle curve becoming a more exaggerated curve. But then we froze the position of this meander and we entrenched it. Entrenched meanders tell us that the land is lifting against the river. The river wasn't up here and was cut down. We're sure that the river has been down there for millions of years. And the land has been lifting against the meander, against the river. The river's been cutting, matching an uplift rate of the bedrock, basalt layer after basalt layer, exposing themselves on the way up. The future of this meander is not more exaggerated meander, development of an oxbow lake. Instead, the future of this curve is more cutting because the uplift continues here in central Washington. Entrenched meanders just south of Ellensburg, Washington. It's all out here to see Coolies, rocks, and canyons is scenery Right here for you and me Two-minute geology